While many of our favorite hymns can boast of being written in moments of great inspiration or in times of life-changing crises, very few can trace their origin to any angry theological battle. Rock of Ages by Augustus Toplady, however, was the product of just such a rancorous debate. In early 1770s, great theological arguments raged in England between the followers of John and Charles Wesley and those of John Calvin. Early in his pastoral career, Augustus Montague Toplady, an ordained minister in the Anglican Church, was attracted to the teachings of the Wesley brothers. As time went on, however, Toplady found himself at philosophical odds over the Wesleyan doctrine of sanctification. This doctrine stated, in part, that it was possible for a truly devout believer to attain a state of heavenly perfection here on earth and thus live without consciously sinning. On the contrary, Toplady believed, along with the followers of John Calvin, that only through the grace of God and on no amount of human effort or good intention could one ever become justified to God. In public debates, religious pamphlets, sermons, and angry letters, Wesley and Toplady did theological battle as a final salvo in his attack on Wesley. In an essay published in 1776 in the Gospel magazine, Toplady published the hymn text we know today as Rock of Ages. It is interesting to note that the poem included lines in direct contradiction to of Wesley's theology. Could my tears forever flow? Could my zeal no languor know? These for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. So intent was Tope Lady upon making the poem a personal, as personal an attack on Charles Wesley as possible that he used many of Wesley's own figures of speech in writing Rock of Ages. In a hymn of his own, Wesley had described Jesus Christ as a rock struck for me, and had continued, Let those two streams of blood and water which once gushed out of thy side bring down pardon and holiness into my soul. Although the first two verses seem a well-aimed rebuttal at Wesleyan theology, the third can be seen to be a very personal affirmation of Toplady's faith. Having lived most of his life in poor health, he was, at the time of the hymn's composition, suffering from tuberculosis. Within two years, in 1778, he died at the age of 38. It is ironic that a hymn born out of such dissension and controversy would have brought such peace and hope to Christians over the past two centuries. Perhaps it is for this very reason that about eight years after Rock of Ages was written, a new and very different story of its origins began to circulate. Apparently, wishing to gain fame and maybe a, a bit of mystical propriety, the vicar of Blagdon, Tope Lady's former parish, told the following lovely but inaccurate tale. As young Augustus Tope Lady, curate of Blagdon in Somerset, England, strode about the rocky countryside one Sunday afternoon in 1776, he saw dark storm clouds gathering as the sky became increasingly threatening and thunder rolled over the rocky promontories of Burrington Combe, the anxious pastor searched for a place of safety from the coming storm. Spying a small ledge between towering boulders, Toplady crept under the sheltering rocks and crouched in their mighty shadows while the storm raged, while the wind roared and the thunder crashed. The words of the beloved hymn came unbidden to his mind, and taking a scrap of paper from his pocket, he hastily scrawled the inspired verses. Visitors to Burlington Combe today are still directed to view the towering rocks and told this romantic tale, and one wonders if Tope Lady would mind so much, given the comfort and security his stirring words have provided over the years. Rock of ages cleft for me, 
Let me hide myself in thee. Let the water and the blood from thy wounded side which flowed be of sin the double cure. Save from wrath and make me pure. Not the labors of my hands can fulfill thy law's demands. Could my zeal no respite know? Could my tears forever flow? All for sin could not atone. Thou must save, and thou alone. While I draw this fleeting breath, when mine eyes shall close in death, when I rise to worlds unknown and behold thee on thy throne, Rock of ages cleft for me, let me hide myself in thee.